Hey everyone, G Scotty here. In this series, I try to get an hour of gameplay for every dollar spent on a certain game. So, with that in mind, is Sea of Stars worth one dollar an hour? Make sure to subscribe and let's check it out. In 2018, Sabotage Studio created the hit platform video game, The Messenger, which received critical and commercial acclaim. I played The Messenger, and let me tell you, this game is awesome. I'm actually not the biggest fan of platformers, so when I say that I fell in love with this game, you know that's very special. It's awesome. The exploration, the music, the story, everything about this game just oozed with personality and love from its creators. Sabotage Studio became rock stars to me, and I couldn't wait to see what they had planned next. So on March 19th, 2020, I can't tell you just how excited I was to see the studio announce their new project, an RPG called Sea of Stars. I didn't need to see a trailer to know that this game was going to be special. But, but then I, I, I did watch the trailer, and golly, this game looks so incredible! We'd have to wait a while, though, because the game kept getting delayed, and delayed, and delayed. It's funny though, because even though a lot of people got frustrated at the delays, it made me even more excited. I fully trusted that Sabotage Studio was working their butts off to make the greatest project they could make. Finally, on August 29th, 2023, the game released for 35 US dollars. I was more than pumped to put this game through the dollar an hour gauntlet. I even streamed the entirety of the main game here on my channel. <laughs> you subscribe to see the streams. <laughs> but anyway, grab your homies and pull out the large cooking pot. Let me tell you the story of my experience with the first 35 hours of my most anticipated game of 2023. Just so you know, I won't spoil any major late game story beats or anything like that, but if you don't want to be spoiled by any footage of the game, not in the trailers at least, or any early story beats at all, then I'd suggest skipping to this timestamp in the video if you'd rather just hear my overall rating of the game. Got it? Alright, now let's go. The story begins with our two main protagonists, Valir and Zale, who grew up in the village of Moon Cradle with their friend and best boy, Garl. Both Valir and Zale were born on the day of the winter and summer solstice, respectively. And as such, the two are to be trained as solstice warriors, heroes who fight for the peace of the world with eclipse magic. See, the world is in constant danger to the threats of a dark alchemist known as the Fleshmancer, who has created insane monsters known as Dwellers, which can only be harmed by the magic that Solstice Warriors possess. If a Dweller is left unchecked, their power can grow to apocalyptic proportions, giving them the title of World Eaters. It's up to Valir and Zale, alongside Garl and a colorful cast of other characters, to defeat the Dwellers before they become World Eaters, and ultimately, Bring the Fleshmancer down from his reign of unholy magics. Let me tell you, this lore is unbelievable. If you like worlds that feel quote unquote lived in, like Fodlin from Fire Emblem Three Houses, Gaia from Final Fantasy IX, The Lands Between from Elden Ring, you are going to love the incredible depth of lore that Sea of Stars has. I was genuinely impressed by the breadth of the world building in this game. Not everything is explored, but there is more than enough to feel like the world is a living, breathing organism that moves even when you're not present. The lore presents an incredible story for the main cast of characters to experience. I don't want to spoil more than just the main synopsis, just because I feel like the story is best experienced rather than just talked about. The story of Sea of Stars touched me in such a way that I won't easily forget. I laughed as I bonded with the characters on their various quests. I cried when they struggled with defeat and loss. This is gonna sound so dumb, but this game made me feel things. And that's just the story beats. This game is new as I'm making this review, yet I can't help but feel a kind of nostalgic attachment that I do with games from my childhood, like Pokemon Crystal or Donkey Kong Country 2. It's as if I've been with Valir and Zale and their friends for so much longer than I really have. Cheesy, I know, but I think the people at Sabotage Studios are masters at capturing the feel of old games while giving a streamlined, modern experience. And that's without me talking about the combat. Sheesh, dude, these battles are so fun! It turns the entire preconceived notion of turn-based combat on its head with the addition of timing your attacks and guards to increase your attack and defense, as well as character combination moves and unique cinematic ultimate attacks. The fights become more like puzzles as you target your enemy's weaknesses to interrupt their strong attacks. It can take some mastery, but there is nothing more satisfying than taking out your enemies without them even breaking out their big guns. 
it makes something so mundane as taking turns to exchange blows into a breathtaking adrenaline rush. And speaking of breathtaking, ugh, I can't tell you how many times I was playing this game and I couldn't help but audibly exclaim, HOLY CRAP THIS GAME IS GORGEOUS! From the striking pixel art and awesome lighting effects, to the wondrous music from Sabotage Studio veteran Rainbow Dragon Eyes and the legendary composer Yasunori Mitsuda from Chrono Trigger, Secrets of Mana, and Xenoblade Chronicles. <sighs> this game is just so beautiful in every sense of the word. I remember entering the 34th hour of the game. I had done a few of the main character's side quests, and the main story was about to end. I couldn't help but feel a melancholy weight. I didn't want the game to end. I wanted to spend more time with the characters and explore their world even more. Thankfully, my friend Drew, <coughs> subscribe to the Drew Gamer, <laughs> told me that I still had a lot of the game left to go, and that completing everything was actually far from over. Yay! There is so much more game than just the main game. There's collectibles to be found, games of wheels to be won, and side quests to be discovered. It amazed me just how much of the world had yet to be explored and just how much game I had yet to play. Sabotage Studio went and just created the whole bakery, not just a cupcake. Dude, that's gotta be the dumbest thing you've ever said out loud. Golly, what am I doing with my life? What I mean to say is that there are so many video games nowadays that just want to get in, take your hard-earned cash, slap you with a story, and maybe some other things if you're lucky, and then send you on your merry way, leaving a strange feeling of just wanting more. Sea of Stars isn't that game. Sea of Stars is a labor of love, unsatisfied with giving you anything less than a breathtaking experience. This story, this lore, combat, music, art, Everything about this game is such a pure experience that I cannot recommend highly enough. If you're not playing this game, you're doing yourself a great disservice. Please stop what you're doing, buy the game on any of the many platforms it's on, and truly experience this lightning in a bottle. You know, after this video is done, please like and subscribe. So, I'm sure it's pretty obvious, but is Sea of Stars worth $1 an hour? I say yes, and give me DLC. A massive thank you to all of you who are members of the channel, especially the biggest goat of the month, Dragon Dance 05. If you want access to cool perks like exclusive $1 an hour streams, videos, shoutouts, and more, click the join button and learn how you can become a member today. Love, peace, and chicken grease. Bye bye!